Hello everyone, Alex Boone here. Welcome back to Hollyford Woods for October's instalment of A Year in the Ancient Woodland. Autumn is in full swing here now. We're going to go looking for fungi and other signs of autumn here in the woods. The colour of the wood has changed again. We're well into autumn now. Seagulls gather on the field around the cows and great groups of rooks too. Although there's still quite a bit of greenery around, we can see that the birch trees are changing colour, going yellow, and even the tops of the oak trees too. We've had a mild autumn with a lot of rain, and that's meant that we've still got some flowers in bloom. We've also got a lot of new foliage coming through. Today we have having patchy moments of sunshine, and a good autumnal breeze coming off the sea. Big billowing clouds, some laden with rain. We're shortly to be heading into November and you can really feel the turn in the season here as we head towards winter, even if the temperatures remain very mild for this time of year. There's leaves down over the path now. Beech trees have a wonderful habit of changing colour sort of randomly. So you've got some leaves going yellow, red or staying green all within the same branch. It's something that's very pleasing to look at. There's a lot of bird song again in the woods. And it's peaceful to stand and just listen to the leaves fall. We're going to go deeper into the woods today to take a look for fungi. We've had a long dry summer and the fungi started to emerge quite late this year. Now I am absolutely no expert in fungi, it's only very recently I've started to take more of an interest in them and in trying to identify them. So at the moment I never forage for mushrooms, but I do take photos and do sketches so that I can use my guidebooks at home to work out what I'm looking at. I don't feel any need to rush. I enjoy the slow process of learning and it can take, you know, a few years to really get the hang of it. And then once that confidence comes, that's when I may start foraging mushrooms to eat. We're going to try a little exercise now. A really good thing you can do is practice scanning the forest floor. Look in the leaf litter to see if you could see any fungi. This can help you to get your eye in so you're spotting that fungi quicker when you're out on your walks. We're going to try three examples. Let's see if you can spot the fungi. We'll do a nice easy one first. This bright white fungus stands out really well against the brown dead leaves. You can't miss these ones. And in here I'm interested to see that although I'm looking mostly for fungi, on the forest floor what I'm getting is a lot of next year's cleavers and stitchwort. There's some young cleavers and some young stitchwort and lots of other young species here as well. You see how the cleavers, they start out with the two seed leaves here and then they start to get their, their little rosettes of leaves. So they always emerge with the two seed leaves first. But it's very hard to identify anything when it's at this stage. As soon as it starts to make out its little rosette, we immediately know what it is. The stitch walk grows straight up in this form. Obviously there's a long spindle first and then opening out to these leaves here. So already here in October we can start looking for next year's spring. We've even got some woundwort flowering here. When you're out 
sketching in your journal, there's a few things to make sure you write down when you're looking for mushrooms and fungi. Firstly, the shape of the cap and whether or not you think it has fully opened out. Secondly, the colour. Thirdly, having a look underneath. Can you see whether there's gills or whether there's a sort of spongy mass? And try and estimate the depth of the gills and the shape of them. Are they hanging down or are they overlapping? And then finally, you can have a look at the head of the fungus. Is there a little cuff just around the stem? All of these things will help you when you're later trying to identify the fungus. Now remember that you don't have to know everything and I sometimes find that a slower answer from taking the time to sketch something, look at it in detail and then go to a guidebook is much more satisfying than just looking it up using a photographic app. I encourage you to do take photographs when you're looking for fungi, it's very helpful and to try and get a look underneath them without uprooting them or damaging them in any way. I really like to advocate for slow learning and taking your time to slowly know or come to know something through observation only. I just find that if you actually really want to become an expert over time and you want to really be someone who knows about it, taking the time to get the answers in a, a slow research kind of way can really help that information go in. Unless you're someone who has an absolutely fantastic memory and can retain information even if you only spend a few seconds looking for it. That's not to downplay the importance of these apps that are available now. Things like OBS Identify, Shroom ID, iNaturalist and others. They're really helpful and they can be especially helpful in a citizen science data gathering exercise. But I just don't think that they should be all you do when you're looking to identify new things. I'd love to know what you think of this idea of slow learning versus fast learning. I think as nature journalists we're naturally drawn to a slower way of learning and observing. But tell me about it in the comments, I'd love to hear your experiences on this. It's going to be something that I'll write about a little bit on my blog. The blog is on Patreon but it's available for free for everybody to view and I'll leave a link to the blogs in the description below. I think the main change up here this month, the ash tree certainly has lost most of its leaves. The oak trees, the leaves are starting to turn yellow. And the sound of the wind is different and there's more wind too. It's bringing more of the sound of the cars up here from the opposite side of the valley and look at the way it's blowing those clouds over. There's birdsong again though, that's nice to hear. And I just really enjoy that sound of the wind in the trees. I really hope you enjoyed this walk in the woodlands today. Please do like the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'll be back in the woodlands for November in just a few weeks when we'll be looking for signs that winter's on its way. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.